Hello everyone, Miss Red here. How are you today? I hope you are doing well. Today, we are going to talk about the why and how of school community partnership. After this video discussion, you will be able to identify the different opportunities for school and community partnership. And you will be able to share personal experiences on the partnership of school and community. Are you ready? Let's start. Let's start first with the opportunities for school and community partnership. Partnership class implies two parties helping each other. Both parties benefit. This means that if a school community partnership exists, both parties benefit from the relationship. Thus, this discussion shall present what the communities can do for schools and what schools can do for communities. Now, my first question is, what can the community do for schools? Here are some examples of what a community can do for schools. The first one is we are very familiar of the Brigada Escuela. Brigada Escuela class, this program engages all education stakeholders to contribute their time, effort, and resources in ensuring that public school facilities are set in time for the forthcoming school opening. It takes place more or less two weeks before classes begin. This is a school maintenance program that has been institutionalized since 2009 when the Department of Education or DepEd issued DepEd Order Number 100. And I know we are very much familiar with the Brigada Escuela. Second um, benefit that the community can do for school is the curriculum development. This can mean um, the use of community resources for learning, like for example, the museum, the elders of the community as key informants in research, or resource persons in the study of local history. The third one class is the work experience program. In your senior high school, you have experienced this. Like business establishments and offices in the community can serve a training ground for learners. A concrete example is a work immersion required for senior high school students. And in this work immersion, students are given the opportunity to work in relevant establishments or offices in the community to help develop in them the competencies or work ethics and values relevant to pursuing further education and or joining the world of work. So we have partner offices for immersion provide senior high school students with the following opportunities. Number one, to become familiar with the workplace. Number two, for employment simulation. And number three is to apply their competencies in areas of specialization or applied subjects in authentic work environments. Class, in this school community partnership, the school can fulfill what curriculum requires and may improve in their curriculum based on community feedback like for example, our industry forum that enables the students to undergo hands-on work experience while community establishments contribute in the formation of graduates who are more ready for life and more equipped for the world of work. Business establishments or any world of work in the community are the ultimate beneficiaries of these graduates who have been more prepared through work immersion. Some schools call this service learning since it actively involves students in a wide range of experiences which benefits students and the community at the same time fulfilling the requirement of a curriculum. Aside from our laboratory school in our campus, we also have partnership or linkages from the Department of Education in Lapu-Lapu, in Mandawe, and even in Cebu province and also, we have linkages in some private institution. Fourth is the remediation and enrichment classes. Parents and retired teachers 
may be involved in school reading remediation and learning enrichment programs. Fifth, youth development programs. The young may involve themselves in youth development programs and develop their skills and talents, learn how to deal positively with peers and adults, and serve as resources in their communities. And of course, the community service. Examples of community service are students participating in tutorial programs, community reforestation programs, cleanup drive for a river, assisting in medical mission, school head involved in planning local celebrations, teachers managing programs, projects and activities, and of course, school band playing in fiesta parade. Now, the next question is, what can schools do for communities in return? Schools class may allow the community to use school resources. Here are some of the concrete examples enumerated by the Department of Education Primer on School Community Partnership. The first one, classroom used by community organizations for meetings. Second, school used as a pooling place, like for example during the election, and venue for a medical mission which it may co-sponsor with the rural health unit. Third, school used by the rural health unit for mother's class on child care. Fourth, this is really really useful, school used as evacuation center when there are typhoon, floods, or even earthquake. School facilities used for community assemblies. Another, school basketball court used for local celebrations and barangay sports league. Next, schools conduct livelihood skills training programs for parents and out of school youths by using school resources. And, livelihood skills training for parents and out-of-school youths by teachers themselves. Now class, what can we learn from the experiences of school and community partners? Here are some concrete examples about their learning experiences. The first one is from Dumingag Central School, Dumingag Zamboanga del Sur. Strong school community partnership, they have their feeding program. And it was maintained by community donors like the Mother Butler Mission Guild, Barangay Councils, Office of the Mayor, parents who budgeted, cooked, and purchased. They also have the so-called kiddie cups wherein these are classes or cups lectures on good manners and right conduct, drug addiction, child abuse, child welfare. So, the Municipal Welfare and Development Office, in partnership with Municipal Health Office, conducted special classes on health and nutrition and the rights of the child. Another concrete example is from the Angels Magic Spot and Project Reach from Pembo Elementary School in Makati City. Pembo Angels Magic Spot, or the PAMS, where the volunteer environmental steward students of Pembo Elementary School, while magic spots were the small dump sites or empty lots in the barangay which were converted by the students into vegetable gardens from which members of the barangay could harvest for home supply, the school for their feeding program, or sold them for cash for the purchase of seedlings and planting of more vegetables. So, in other words, it is a very sustainable project. PAMS class or Pembo Angels Magic Spot brought together students, teachers, school head, parents, barangay officials, and other members of the community to clean up a little nooks for garbage and converted them into green areas with vegetables shared by all. It also taught gardening skills and positive attitude toward work to students and supplemented the feeding program for the underweight and the malnourished in the school, which is they call Project Bowls, or Brain Operates 
well unloaded stomachs. Another effective practice was Project Revitalize Enthusiasm for Assistance to Children of Humanity, or REACH, where each teacher adopted one student and acted as his or her mentor for the entire school year. The teacher gave free tutorial to the adopted student during his or her free time, visit the student's family every now and then, and in some instances, gave the student a daily allowance of 10 pesos from the teacher's own pocket. These contributed to improve performance of Pembo Elementary School. Another example still in Pembo Elementary School is the Urbanidad Kids where they are the ideal students who acted as role models for the students and the Pembo community. They were the cleanest, most well-mannered, and most diligent in class. And another activity from Pembo Elementary School is Pera sa Panapon, was a weekly trash market where students, their parents, and other members of the community were invited to bring their recyclable garbage. The project helped the school purchase the necessary supplies and was able to support two students to a 2010 math competition in Singapore. Amazing, right? All of these Partner because of the partnership of school and community. Now, here is the sociological basis for school-community partnership. The functionalist theory class states that institutions must perform their respective functions for the stability of the society. Other institutions must come in if one institution fails to do its part for the sake of society. Class, the school cannot do it all. It takes a village to educate a child. So goes the African proverb. It has to work in partnership with other institutions in the community, such as the church, government organizations, and non-government organizations. The rearing and education of the child is a primary obligation of parents, right? The school the church and other social institutions come in to assist parents and families to fulfill their irreplaceable obligation. The breakdown of marriages class, the demand for both mother and father to work to meet the demands of a rising cost of living, resulting to less or practically no more time for parents to spend time with their children have, however, attack the stability of families and have adversely affected families in the performance of their irreplaceable duty to educate children. Added to these is the increasing number of families composed of single mothers struggling to raise a family. With the burden of earning lodged solely on shoulders of one parent, single parents struggle to earn enough to provide for their families. Consequently, this responsibility class leads to their having a limited amount of time to spend for and with growing and developing children who unfortunately become more likely single-parent families themselves. And the cycle goes on. This is not to mention the negative effect of uncontrolled and unregulated use of technology on the young. While the use of technology has brought a lot of convenience, its uncontrolled and unregulated use by the tech-savvy kids expose these kids to all sorts of information, not necessarily favorable for their development. So families, schools, and other social institutions need to work together to save the youth. Again, class, that is the sociological basis for school-community partnership. Now, this time, let's talk about the legal basis for parents and community involvement. It is no wonder why even our laws support school-community partnership. Republic Act 9155 or the Governance of Basic Education Act, Section E, Number 10, states that 
one of the responsibilities of school heads is establishing school and community networks and encouraging the active participation of teacher organizations, non-academic personnel of public schools, and parent-teachers community associations. Section 3 of the same act encourages local initiatives for the improvement of schools and learning centers to provide the means by which improvements may be achieved and sustained. Another legal basis class for the parents and community involvement is the Batas Pambansa Bilang 232 or the Education Act of 1982, Section 7. It states that every educational institution shall provide for the establishment of appropriate bodies through which the member of the educational community may discuss relevant issues and communicate information and suggestions for assistance and support of the school for the promotion of their common interest. Another law is a Republic Act 8525, Adopt a School Program Act. It allows private entities to assist a public school, whether elementary, secondary, or tertiary, in but not limited to the following areas of faculty development for training and further education, construction of facilities like school building and classrooms, upgrading of existing facilities, provision of books, publications and other instructional materials, and modernization of instructional technologies. Even the Philippine Education for All or EFA in 2015 plan, then a vision and a holistic program of reforms that aim to improve the quality of basic education for every Filipino by the end of 2015, likewise states, Schools shall continue to harness local resources and facilitate involvement of every sector of the community in the school improvement process. This EFA class, again, the F Education for All 2015 plan, was extended in the Education for All Beyond 2015 Agenda 2030. Agenda 2030 has seven new educational targets from 2015 to 2030 that must involve education stakeholders, which is a sense in school community partnership. UNESCO Assistant Director General for Education, Dr. Chan Tang, himself admits that Agenda 2030 cannot be realized without schools partnering with community. He said, our vision must be more aggressive, more committed, not just involving government, non-government agencies, but all stakeholders. And lastly, the Republic Act 9155 or Governance of Basic Education Act states that partnership between school and community also ensures that number one, educational programs, projects, and services take into account the interest of all members of the community. Second, the schools and learning centers reflect the values of the community by allowing teachers or learning facilitators and other staff to have the flexibility to serve the needs of all learners. And third, local initiatives for the improvement of schools and learning centers are encouraged and the means by which these improvements may be achieved and sustained are provided. So, schools and communities function better when they work as a team. Again, class, school and community partnership means school head, teachers, learners, parents of learners, and non-teaching personnel working together with civic and religious leaders, alumni, other parents, non-government organizations, government organization for the good of the children. Are you learning? I hope you are. Thank you so much for listening and have a good day. Go education. Go education.